Do you want an amazing marriage? Are you ready to take your marriage to the next level? Then stick around for your Marriage Matters podcast with Marriage Coach Lynn. Let's put some fun and sizzle into your relationship. Welcome to your Marriage Matters podcast. This is the place to be if you support lifelong committed marriage and if you want to work on making your marriage happier and prosperous. It's no secret that as we look around, we see many marriages fail. We see problems. We see discontent among married partners. There's a huge phenomena going on, and that is the emotional affair. Rather than face and work on issues within the marriage, it's easy to get an ego boost or good feeling from someone outside your marriage. An emotional affair is a relationship where you invest a lot of time and energy with someone other than your spouse that involves intimate conversation and feelings. Nothing physical has to happen, but there is a rush of excitement, longing, and sometimes love for someone else. The solution is not to look outside our marriage when the going gets tough, but to face what is missing in your marriage, or almost always what is missing in yourself. Emotional affairs are often secret and not acknowledged, even by the persons involved. Most of the time, emotional affairs sneak up on us. You may get a little too chummy with a coworker or friend of the opposite sex. Many people will rationalize that it's just a good or special friendship going on. You can hide out on social media and no one will ever know your secret longings or relationships. Your marriage might be okay, but the allure of someone who understands you and who you feel comfortable with seems innocent at first. Most of us think of affairs as involving extramarital sexual relations. But have you considered the gravity and threat of emotional affairs? Emotional affairs might not involve obvious physical breach of vows, but they certainly pose a threat to one's marriage. Let's list eight things you can do to ward off emotional infidelity. Number one, create an environment where you need each other. Sounds strange, huh? I'm not talking about emotionally needy in a weak sense, but as you form your marriage team, Find ways to depend on each other in loving ways. Let me give a few examples from my marriage. My husband depends on me to shop and cook. He is freed up from those responsibilities. We have adopted roles that work for us. He depends on me to plan weekend getaways and to consider vacations. He might come up with great ideas and then I go off and see what dates work and do some research on places to stay and people to visit. I'm also freed up from yard work. I don't even think about it. We don't take each other for granted, but we depend on each other for certain tasks. Number two, carve out more uninterrupted time together. When you have young children, this can be tough. The more time you spend together, hopefully the more you like being with each other. This does not leave empty chunks of time for your mind to wander and entertain someone outside of your marriage. The third thing we can do to ward off emotional infidelity is to read my book, Re-Energize Your Marriage in 21 Days. Do the exercises, especially the one about hugs and the recreational activities. Number four, emotional affairs are different for men and women. Women tend to crave love and affection. Men tend to need respect and admiration. Men and women stray for different emotional reasons. Be mindful of that. Women are particularly bothered if they discovered that their man has been having an emotional affair. Why? Because he's invested himself in a relationship. Number five, the workplace is one of the most dangerous threats to marriage. We have to guard against how we dress, what we say, how we act. Know the difference between flirting, friendly conversation, and professional friendships. If you want a closer friendship, make it a couple's friendship. Keep accountability. With your workplace friendships, imagine your spouse right next to you. 
Would you act and say the things you say? Would your spouse approve? Number six, I want to bring up a pesky statistic. We have to face reality. It's reported that 74% of men and 68% of women would have an affair or commit adultery if they never got caught. Do you hear what I'm saying, people? That's you and me, most of us. Think about it. On your wedding day, you're all smiles, and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you won't be in the 40 to 50% of people who get divorced. You'd never dream of finding yourself in a predicament of temptation. If we know the statistics, we can make sure we are not part of them. By the way, divorce within the first year of marriage and within the first five years continues to climb. We must work on creating a healthy emotional relationship. Number seven, let's commit ourselves to the concept that love is a commitment and a decision, not a feeling. We need strong values. If you are temporarily unhappy in your marriage or feeling distant from your spouse, do something about it. Nurture your marriage. Hang in there and work toward improvement within yourself and your relationship. Divorce is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Number eight, do not put energy into the past. You must be loyal to your marriage and don't reminisce about the past. Don't let your thoughts go back to high school or college or to what if scenarios. Our minds play tricks and make us think the grass is greener in some other pasture. If you head over there, you'll step in cow patties. I'll repeat the eight things you can do to keep away emotional infidelity. Don't put energy into the past. Commit yourself to the concept that love is a commitment and a decision, not a feeling. A high percentage of people would commit adultery if they never got caught. The workplace is one of the most dangerous threats to marriage. Emotional affairs are different for men and women. Women crave love and affection. Men need respect and admiration. Read my book, Re-Energize Your Marriage in 21 Days. You can find it on Amazon.com or on my website, MarriageCoachLynn.com. Carve out more uninterrupted time together as a way to ward off emotional infidelity, right? You spend more time together, you're not spending as much time with coworkers or people in your community. Create an environment where you need each other is also a very good way to ward off emotional infidelity. What happens is that the people entertain their wild imaginations in order to fill a void of boredom or discontent. Stop yourself in your tracks if you are entering a blurred line, the line between what is acceptable and what we rationalize. Guard the heart. Be careful of flattery from others. It's possible that many of us would not marry the partner sitting across the table from us 20 years later. Sometimes we magnify our partner's faults and the faults bother us more than the good things about your spouse. Let's look to the better side and overlook the imperfections. You would hope that your spouse would do the same for you. It's possible that there are a number of soulmates out there for us. In light of this, some people will choose to further pull themselves away from their marriage relationship. As we learn more in life and about our mates, some will grow closer and some will grow further apart. I certainly hope that those of you listening will see the worth and value in growing closer together. Our differences can seem more pronounced as the years go by. We might feel we have less in common. This is not a reason to drift or divorce, but to learn selflessness, to not demand, but to continue to give. Present a good attitude, even if you have some longings in some areas of life. My friend, who's been married over 50 years, wants to travel, but her husband is ill and she cannot. Not traveling is one sacrifice she chooses to make. Maybe your viewpoints about certain topics have changed. The important thing to do is not to seek out someone else to bond with, but to show emotional support for your spouse. Agree that maybe you won't discuss it too much because it either hurts one spouse, is of no interest, or is just not a passion of one person. 
Many people grow closer as they get older and have more in common. Sometimes a husband is prime to an emotional affair because he sees his wife with a good relationship with his teenage or adult child and is acting out of jealousy. He wants attention. He could feel emasculated by his critical wife. He could be nervous about retirement and his place in the world. And he could be ripe for a woman to come along and fill his low self-esteem needs. He himself does not feel validated and he needs a new boost of affection and attention. If someone comes along and fills those new desires, he might be tempted to have an emotional or sexual affair. And the same is true for women. Those are just some very common scenarios, like I said, that can sneak up on you. You must continuously tend to the garden of your relationship, lest it become overwrought with weeds. There are many ways in which to ensure the emotional health of your marriage. We talked about at least eight today. Until next time, make your marriage great.